It's time again for that sweet justice feeling. We've got another Petty Revenge. I'm glad that so many of you enjoyed our first Entitled Parents 20 Minutes special episode. If you haven't checked it out, be sure to watch it after this one. If you'd like Entitled Parents to be the new series on this channel, please let me know in the comments. On today's episode of Petty Revenge, a warehouse worker is sick of the sales team always asking him to work overtime for customers without any additional pay. So when the worst customer he's ever had to deal with starts making all kinds of demands, he goes the extra mile just to have some petty revenge. And our fan submitted story. His friends have asked to borrow the school computers, but they are only using them to install and play video games. This could jeopardize his new job in the IT department, so he tells his boss and they come up with a plan to stop them for good. Don't forget to like and subscribe and let's get straight into it. This story was called, You want me to stay an hour after close? Sure, I'll do that. One of the most frustrating things about the warehouse work I used to do was the complete disconnect between the sales staff and the warehouse. Sales staff would promise the moon and stars to customers to secure a sale, with little to no consideration for what it would do to the warehouse staff. This would range from promising that we would be able to load up a product that clearly wouldn't fit into a vehicle, that we would lift something that would take four guys when we would only have one person staffed, and the worst one, that we would wait for a customer to come back and pick up goods. After a few months of these ridiculous promises, I finally went to management and said that if sales staff expected us to stay past close to assist a customer, then we would be billing that time as overtime. Management downright refused, as the company couldn't afford overtime. A few days after that conversation, I was on the sales floor unpacking a new range of rugs when a salesperson approached me with this woman, who immediately had the I am better than you atmosphere. I could tell already from this lady's smug smirk that she's worn down the salesperson and made them promise her something that would be against policy. Hey Darkly Near, this lady has bought a few rugs from out the back. Can she pick them up later? Sure, you can pick them up between now and 5pm. The lady responds smugly. Salesperson has already said I can come back at 7.30pm and pick them up. Well miss, I'll be here until 5pm. After that, the warehouse is closed for the evening. If you'd like, I can always help you tomorrow morning. I'll be here at 7.30, and you'd better be here, or I'm calling the manager and freaking complaining. I gave her a shrug and went back to my work. Oh, and make sure you clean the rugs before I pick them up. I'm going to be inspecting them, and they'd better be freaking spotless. She then turned on her heel and walked off. Lady, you paid $20 a piece for clearance rugs. That originally retailed at $350. Salesperson walked away, assuming all was good. There's no way that I'm waiting two and a half hours for such a condescending crabby woman. I grabbed my trolley and made my way back to the warehouse, passing the clearance area. As I'm walking, I notice a lady's purse sitting amongst a stack of cushions. I walk over and pick it up. Before I take it to the counter, I have a gut feeling. Can it be? I open the purse and find a driver's license. It's this annoying customer's license and purse. I chuckle to myself as I walk back to the warehouse, make my way into the warehouse office and take extra care to safely secure her purse inside our safe. I then start my closing up process and as a little extra slice of pettiness, type in the all purpose alarm code and reset the alarm system code so only I can unlock the warehouse when I show up for my shift the next morning. Good luck getting your rugs and purse. The aftermath. Apparently this lady showed up at 7.30 p.m. only to find the gates locked, everything pitch black, no rugs. She filed a complaint and wanted a full refund. Not for the clearance prices she paid, but for the full price of the rugs. When I was questioned about this, I provided my manager with the emails from the GM, stating that they don't pay employees to work any overtime. They also questioned me about the change of alarm system code, and I just said that we had a potential security issue, and with this lady's expensive purse being left in store, I figured it'd be best resolved the following morning, and kept in a safe and secure spot. In the end, the jerk got her purse back, but I like to think she wasted a ton of gas and caused her immense amounts of aggravation. When the customer did show to pick her rugs up, I also helpfully pointed out that it was illegal to drive without a license. 
She shot me the most amazing death glare I've ever seen. Sometimes businesses want to have their cake and eat it too. They want their employees to work overtime, but they don't want to pay them for that overtime, which is obviously unfair. It's amazing how this guy took a situation that was unfavorable to him and turned it into a delicious piece of petty revenge. This fan submitted story was called Petty Computer Revenge. So about a year ago, I had finally gotten my job. Yay me. That job, and to this day, is working for my school district, repairing things such as projectors, laptops, etc. This job plays a major role in the story. About a month into my job, three friends of mine, who we shall just call A, B, and D, started asking me things like, Hey, can we borrow this from the computer room? Or something along those lines. One of the benefits of my job is that I can take home whatever tech that I like so long as I document it and have it inspected once a week. I hadn't told my friends about this, but somehow they apparently knew. At the time, all I was using was one of the private laptops, which to this day still holds up as strong. So I figured, so long as I was strict, nothing would go wrong. Oh boy, how wrong I was. After explaining to my friends the rules they needed to follow, they pretended to acknowledge them. So I lent them the computers under my name. Big mistake. A few days pass and oddly enough, my friends miss Friday and all three are late to class on Monday. I figured that maybe all three of them had possibly gotten sick or something. Turns out they were using the computers to play games the entire time. Having ditched because of a special event in one of them. I was ticked off. Firstly, you weren't supposed to get games on them. I had stressed this rule to them. And secondly, I ended up needing them back for Tuesday as we needed to roll all of the Adobe products over to a new version. This gave me an amazing idea. Every computer in the district has a program that prevents changes on the hard drive, like installing new programs, getting documents, etc. So if you powered off the computer, seemingly you had done nothing at all. Unless you had the master key from my computer teacher or the head of the tech team, there was no way of getting around that. I told all three of them that I'd need the laptops back by tomorrow, and the three of them groaned like, Come on, just make something up. I told them no, as it could put my job on the line, which was true. I just told them all to bring them to my place after school, which they claimed they would do. Come 6pm that day, not a single one had been returned to me. So I set off around town with my empty computer bag, and by 7.30pm, I have the laptops back. All of them were dirty, and they were crammed with things that shouldn't be on them, as they hadn't been shut down. This is when my idea came to me. I decided that the next day, as my job cut into class time, just the last two periods, which were PE and geography, that I'd tell the truth. My friends, of course, didn't let me go without begging for the computers, which I promised I would let them use again. I explained my plan to my computer teacher, who actually agreed to it after I told her what happened. So after five hours of upgrading countless Adobe products, we set to work on the laptops. And the last three were the specific ones that my friends would be getting. After an additional hour of work that counted as overtime, thanks boss, the laptops were ready. The next day, I signed them out and gave them to my friends all three of which rushed home to re-download all of their games and play. Boy, were they in for a surprise. The next morning, they found me sitting in the cafeteria about 30 minutes before classes. I was playing Cuphead, which I had bought through the Microsoft Store. Kinda irrelevant, but this ticked them off. They told me that the three laptops were broken. How so? I asked them, trying not to let it show that I knew exactly what was going on. We can't seem to get any extra programs. The three of them said this almost simultaneously. Why would you need any? I asked them, noticing my computer teacher behind them. They hadn't noticed her. Because we want to play games. This was the general response. Give us one like yours. Friend B tried grabbing my computer, which failed as my computer teacher tapped the three of them. They all turned around and went silent. Needless to say, we aren't friends anymore. What I had done was gone in and switched the computers to guest mode preventing anything from being run unless signed in as an admin, which is the default account. But that was locked down on those computers. So when the three had tried installing their games, it hadn't worked at all. 
All they could do was use the Adobe products, which was the opposite of why they had gotten the computers. The three of them ended up with detention for a week because of misuse of school property, or something along those lines. Man, revenge can be a sweet thing, huh? Before this, these three had always begged me for things when I had gotten paid every other week, and I caved in. So I guess this is also revenge for that too. If you'd like your story to be narrated by me, don't forget to visit the subreddit r slash voicey here, link below. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe if you'd like to see more. Alright, I'll see you in the next one.